we've now built, you know, kind of a chart narrative that's interesting. Um, so everybody goes to the next two things, gold, Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, I knew where you're going. I just didn't know what order. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but that's a logical order, by the way. I mean, when you stop to think about it, yeah, the, 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 you're taking things in a very logical, sequential order that here's how dominoes fall. Here you have to figure out, you know, you have to figure out the base of a, of a pyramid before you figure out the top and that sort of thing. So I think it's very logical. So with I gold, think, the fear with gold with me is this divergence. A lot of technical guys that I trust don't trust this rally, but all the fundamentals would suggest it goes further. The positioning is extreme, so I feel nervous, and I don't know what to do. I feel a bit trapped. What, what, are, what are you thinking? Well, I, I'm going to go back, Raul, and make a point that I've made in writing a number of times uh, going back to June of last year. In June of last year, we had an upward thrust in the price of gold that completed a massive multi-year chart pattern that gave a target, by the way, of 1778 met two days ago. But the point I'm making is when we started climbing off the bottom in the middle of last year, June, July, August, People were making the point that the commercials were net record shorts. The specs were net record longs in gold. They're going, certainly it can't keep going up because the commercials keep selling it. Well, it was interesting they said that because if you went back into history, actually there was one other time when the commercials had a larger net short position the specs had a larger net long position, and that point in time was just at the very start of a thousand dollar rally in gold that uh, that ha that started basically basically in two thousand. I think it was August September two thousand nine, where gold started a massive move going from a thousand to its eventual high. That had a very similar composition of open interest as we have had during this run-up in gold now. So I really don't buy the fact that, oh, my goodness, you've got the commercials stacked up on the short side of gold, then that obviously has to be bearish. Because, you know, when you get capitulation by commercials in a market, that is when you get the strongest possible moves, is when the commercials are forced to capitulate. And they've been forced to capitulate an awful lot already, they may be forced to capitulate further. You know, we, we created uh, the shakeout in gold that we had. That faked me out a little bit. I mean, it didn't fake out my opinion of gold. What it did is fake out my positioning. It faked out my tactics. It created ha havoc to my tactics when we I saw had, the, the, the mid-March break. kind of threw me out a bit, and then I've been scrambling on the back, back foot since. So I think we go higher. I mean, we're up here. I think the Elliott guys are all bearish gold, which is usually right. good because the Elliott guys are usually wrong. But, um, y you know, on everything, although they call the stock market to climb pretty well. So I just think the path of least resistance is off. We have had some really weird things take place in the basis, basis being price differential between physicals and the nearby future. The, those have been erratic here in the last 30 days or so. They, they've just been completely wacko d due to uh, deliverables, uh, the position of deliverables against the COMEX contract. But I think gold just continues higher. It, it's probably going to stair step. It's going to it's going to climb uh, a wall of worry. But in my opinion, I think we go 1950, and then I have to rejudge it from there. But having said that, I also have to have full disclosure that having really turned into a significant bull in gold in June of last year, I covered half my position two days ago in gold when it hit my 1778 target. So, but I definitely would be willing to replace that position should we dip back towards 1700. Okay, final one, Bitcoin. That's one where we may find a, a disagreement in. You know, I have been... I'm going to call myself a narrative bull in Bitcoin. 
the uh, you, you know the Bitcoin story. Well, and by the way, Raul, for those who don't know, and I've mentioned it before, you're the one that turned me on to Bitcoin, <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank you for that. And that goes way back. I mean, that goes way back into 2016. You mentioned it to me in March of 2016. <laughs> and you sent me a chart and said, Peter, what do you think of this chart? And I looked at it and go, you know, I've heard about this crazy market. This chart is nuts. And, uh, you know, you turned me into an instant one glance of the chart bull and Bitcoin. And, you know, of course, we had the big move which I thought was really interesting because both you and I positioned ourselves very well in Bitcoin. But, you know, we both kind of took some off at a thousand and then we got the wrath of God from the trolls, you know, for a triple your money trade. I never could figure that one out. But nevertheless, you know, the, the Bitcoin narrative makes sense to me. It makes me want to say Bitcoin to the moon. $50,000 Bitcoin, $100,000 Bitcoin. But boy, is there a big caveat to that. The caveat to me is that Bitcoin right now has every reason in the world to go up. It's monetary supply. It's global uncertainty. It's all kinds of, it's, in, it's a strong gold market. It's a weak stock market. My goodness, if Bitcoin can't go up with what we have as a backdrop now, Part of me as a technician wants to look for the, you know, look for the shadows in the in in the, in the in the dark alleyway, right? And I'm going. This is a market you, that really should be going up, and it's not. But look at the larger wedge, right? There's a large triangle wedge, whatever pattern you want to call it. Now, could it go back down to the to retest the base of that pattern? Yeah, possible. Now that could be, I don't know exactly where that would be, but it could be 3,000, it could be 4,000, it could be, you know, it depends where you draw the line, whether it's an upward sloping or a flat version. I mean, that's possible too. So Very possible. And that, by the way, is, you know, there's a lot of people that criticize both you and I because we periodically change our mind on the necessity. You know, we look at a market and we formulate an idea. You think a lot like I think, Raul, and that is strong opinions, weekly held. When we have opinions, we have strong opinions. It's necessary to have strong opinions so we can carry a large enough position that if we're right, it becomes meaningful. Yeah. But when presented with new information, we have to reappraise. You know, yeah. there are people who are dogmatic on position. They'll go to their death with the position without changing their mind. And so while I'm nervous with Bitcoin because I feel there are some things I see in the charts that are negative, it's not acting right. I also see the wedge that, that, that you see, I call it a symmetrical triangle, it goes back to the December 2017 highs, then you have the December 17, uh, 18 uh, lows, then you go up into the June of 19 high, and then the break that we've had recently, and you have a huge symmetrical triangle. Should that symmetrical triangle, if should we bottom in here, go back down to 4,000, 3,800, hold, start up, build something on a daily chart? Yeah, uh, th 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 then yes. And so, yeah, I know it comes across as real weird to people who want to be dogmatic in their thinking, but I have in the back of my mind uh, an interpretation, a labeling of the Bitcoin chart that will take me one way or take me another way. And I don't really care which way it is. Yeah, so for me, I just look at that structure, understand the narrative. I look at that huge structure, the big triangle, and I'm like, okay, I usually know how these play out, particularly when I'm kind of pretty confident of the macro and the fundamental and everything else. Now, the question is, is how does it play out? Yeah, That's yeah. the hard part. And often, it kind of gut checks you once more than you want to be gut checked in a pattern like that. So... You know, maybe it goes lower first, significantly lower. Maybe it only goes half as low because then you've got the idea, yeah, it's definitely going to retest and then it doesn't retest the low. You know, ch these kind of triangle patterns tend to, as you've said before, they tend to morph in ways that kind of frustrate you. But you just know that you're only operating within the context of a much bigger pattern and you'll have plenty of time to get it right. You can either try and buy it lower down, buy it in the middle or buy it on the breakout over the next time horizon, the probability of you being right and it goes up is pretty high, depending on your time, on, depending on the time horizon. Well, I, I, I think that's right. And, you know, I pointed out to people, if, if you want to just have a very, very simplistic 
technical approach to trading Bitcoin, just use a simple moving average. I don't, I don't know what it is, 14 day, 21 day, 30 day, take your pick, pick your poison. Because the reality is, let's just say I use for timing sometimes an 18 day moving average. If Bitcoin is going to go from wherever to 50, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, trading it with a simple moving average is kind of like paying a premium for the fire insurance on your home, right? You don't get your premium back. But what you're assured is if your house bills to the ground, burns to the ground, you're covered. And so I guarantee you one thing, that if Bitcoin goes to $100,000, the 18-day moving average is going to spend most of its time in an up profile. And it's going to keep a person positioned to the to the right side of the market. And so you can just adopt some very, very simple technical indicators to say, you know, if if I'm wrong and the 18-day moving average is pointing down, I'm not going to own it or I'm not going to own as much of it. But you just adopt some very, very simple technical indicators that say, you know, this is the insurance premium I am paying to be long should the market have the increase that it could possibly have. I've always said about Bitcoin, I think there's a 50% chance it goes to 100,000, but I think there's a 50% chance it goes to zero. And so within that parameter, how do I define a, a positive reward to risk profile trade? And so, you know, at Bitcoin at 6,700 or wherever it is today, uh, boy, 100,000 versus zero, and then you add some simple technical indicators, all of a sudden, you know, you have, you have profiled the trade that should be profitable. Or if not profitable, it's not going to cost you your, your home.